Hi, this is Mike Seifert coming from New Michigan Realty. I'm the broker and president. Today's topic, I want to talk about choosing the right broker. So when you're getting into the business of real estate or if you've been in the business for several years, uh, the most important thing is to choose the correct broker that's good for you. And so many people ask and have the thought of, how do I choose the right broker? Well, there's several factors you need to consider when you're looking for a broker. First off, you got to feel comfortable with the person you're interviewing with, uh, if, you know, such as the broker. Um, you got to see if they're supportive, you know, what they offer, how much the fees are, things of that nature. So, number one, as for a new agent, the most important thing is the broker support. How much broker support are you actually going to receive? Now, some companies, the larger uh, you know, firms such as Keller Williams, Remax, Coldwell Banker, they're great companies and they'll have very good training. However, when you go into the training room, you're going to be with 10, 20 other agents. There's going to be a teacher in the room talking theory and telling you about paperwork and different things. The challenge with that is when that class is done, the teacher's done. They go on to their next uh, assignment or they move on and normally a lot of the agents cannot get a hold of them. So the other thing is that these trainers usually are not in the field. So for example me as a broker when I'm training somebody I'm coming with them from experience and from actual uh, things that have happened to me in my career. So I speak from experience not just saying what could happen or what I think is going to happen. So I'm still in the field active. I'm not selling as many houses as I could be because I'm managing the company and helping other agents uh, run their business and grow. So these teachers normally don't have the experience. They haven't sold real estate for quite a long time. So that's one thing you have to consider. Another thing a lot of agents or a lot of agencies will tell you, a lot of brokerages, is that we have leads. We have a ton of leads. Come over here. Leads, leads, leads. We're going to give you leads. Well, number one, uh, that might be true, but do you think as a new agent, do you really think that the broker that's telling you this is going to give you pristine leads? Think about that for one moment. You're a brand new agent and you don't know anything about real estate or you're, you're barely trained. I can promise you that a broker that's promising you leads is not going to give somebody that's new a $500,000 lead. Now, not all brokers are the same. I can't speak for everyone. But from my own personal experience, okay, and talking to a lot of people that I come in contact with, their broker is not giving them a half a million dollar deal for their first transaction. They're going to get leases. They're going to get, you know, uh, you know, fifty, hundred thousand dollar transactions, which all are respectful. You always want to treat the small transactions with the same respect as the big transactions. The reason is, if you treat the bot guy with the small transaction. Okay, bad. He's going to tell his rich uncle that you treated him bad. And the rich uncle is going to say, darn, I was going to sell, uh, have him sell my million dollar home. And now you lost a deal or you lost the tra that transaction because of how you treated somebody. So you got to be equal in everything you do. So basically that's it. I mean, the promise of leads is, is a possibility, but just be aware that a lot of it's smoking on the glass and you have to be careful. The other big thing is fees. A lot of new agents don't realize that a 50-50 split is a terrible deal for you. A lot of agents kind of get, so to speak, and excuse my tone here, suckered by getting a 50-50 deal. They come into a company, the broker says, oh, we're going to give you all this stuff for 50% of your income. And yeah, for 50%, you should get a phone app. You should get all these top tools they're going to promise you. It's 50% it's of your income. You should get a ton of stuff for that. In the end, all that stuff does not make you money. What makes you money is getting in front of people face-to-face. -face. That's what counts. So, you know, in essence, it, it's, you know, it's, you got to be very careful. So when you're determining what brokerage look at their splits look at their caps look at their programs look at two or three brokers before you make a decision and see what they offer you know and compare it then and talk to people in person and find out you know what they have to offer and see if you feel comfortable with 
that broker, with the person that's interviewing you. So that's some of the things. The other, the other thing with broker support is, are you going to have someone on demand, like within an hour or within 10, 20 minutes? If you have a question, can you get a hold of somebody right away and ask them a quick question if you're in the field and you're stuck with something? That's what you have to ask yourself. What do you do in an emergency situation when you need to talk to somebody? Is there a mentor? A lot of these bigger companies, they, they will give you a mentor, no doubt. But let me tell you, when the mentor is busy with their own transactions, you are second priority. Do not think the mentor is going to stop their transaction to help you out with yours. It's just not going to happen. So you've got to have somebody in the brokerage firm that is specifically looking out for the agents that are there. And that's the broker's job. The broker's job is to make sure that all the agents are taken care of and they're supported. And if the broker does some of his own deals, he, they, that broker has to balance everything out. They, they can't just worry about themselves. If you're a selfish person in this business, you're going to fail. It's just 100% true. You, you can't be selfish and expect to be successful. So those are some of the things that you just want to make sure to consider when choosing a broker. And then other factors are location. Uh, you know, some people ask, you know, how many listings does a brokerage have? Uh, these off-the-topic questions. It doesn't matter how many brokerage list or listings a brokerage has, for example. It matters if you're going to get the support, if the broker is knowledgeable, and you know things of that nature. So, oh, going back to the leads, I want to mention that if you're going to join a bigger company or a company that charges 50-50, think about this: if you're generating all your own leads, you're actually paying them to generate all your own leads. If you do everything yourself, you're wasting money in my opinion you're wasting your valuable time and commission so find a company that's not going to take out too many fees not trying to get rich off of one agent but rather making the pie bigger is how i say it like at our company we like to make the pie bigger instead of trying to get rich off of one agent that's just not how we do it we, we make the pie bigger we take less from you so find a broker that's not greedy that's not going to take you for everything and you can flourish there um, find a responsible brokerage. Uh, are the resources there? Um, you know, a confident bro broker. Make sure that you know they can provide you with answers to things that you need. Um, again, training. The biggest thing is training. Going back to that topic, um, you know, see what type of training the brokerage has. If they just offer classes, or you can just go online. Some one of these uh, competitions around here in Troy, Michigan, says they oh they have a virtual class. Well, let me tell you something. Virtual reality is not real estate. You cannot sell houses in virtual reality. So if you're training in one of these virtual reality simulations or you're in a class that's a virtual class to the computer on the Internet, on the Internet, you're wasting your time. You're going to learn some things, but socially you're losing valuable skills. You need to learn social skills and people skills to get out there and actually uh, get people to like you. So you're the point of sale in real estate. It's not like back in the day. With the advent of Zillow, the public now has the inventory of real estate. Back years ago, you would have to go to a brokerage to get the inventory of real estate. You would not know what's actually for sale unless you looked in the newspaper or heard it on the radio or talked to an agent. Nowadays, the general public knows what's for sale. They can go to Zillow and they can see everything. So your job now is to become the point of sale and to get that person to go through you and that's going to take several factors. Maybe it is the brand name. Maybe some clients just like the brand name. That's fine. But I can tell you one thing. If you have some family members that know you and love you, they're going to go through Bob, for example, because they like Bob. Bob, it doesn't matter where what firm he's at. Remax, Keller Williams, New Michigan Realty. Whatever firm Bob is at, Bob's going to get the business because they like Bob. So why should you pay 50% of your income to, to a, one firm when you can find a firm that's going to take less, give you the same training, and everything, you know, it, it just doesn't make sense. Now, some of the other firms do have more exposure as far as the brand name. Yes, the brand name Keller Williams is everywhere. Okay, they're going to say, oh, we have more power because we're, we're a big branding company, and you're, you know, another brokerage that you're considering may not have as much branding power. I tell you right now, that is not going to get you business. Just because they have a brand name, just because there's a big brand name out there, it does not mean, in my opinion, that you're going to generate income from that. Maybe on a rare occasion where somebody wants that brand name, yes, you will get them with that. 
But if it's somebody that's looking for a skilled realtor that knows what they're doing, that's smart, and they like them, it doesn't matter if you're at Remax or, you know, one of the big companies or Keller Williams, you're going to get beaten out if, if the person doesn't like you. Or if you're better, if you're at a smaller brokerage and you're an awesome agent, you're going to get business either way. So it doesn't matter in the end. It's really up to you and your skills of selling. So anyhow, I hope this helped. Uh, this video helps you decide uh, at least what to look for in a brokerage. And um, I hope this video helps. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below or email me, text me. I'll be happy to answer your questions. So again, I want to thank you for watching this video. And um, remember, whatever brokerage you do choose, make sure it's the right fit for you. Don't go somewhere just because of the money or just because um, of they're saying they have awesome training. Make sure that you find out the facts of how things work before you choose a brokerage. Thank you and uh, take care.